Hi, sheep. <laughs> okay, so this year for the very first time, something kind of special happened. And that is that as a result of a video I posted online, I received a death threat, not just one death threat, several death threats. And in this ranty run, I am going to explain how the fallout of that has led to me completely dealing, completely dealing, completely changing how I deal with online abuse. So yeah, we'll have a chat about that. But uh, just in case you're unfamiliar with the channel, my name's Stephen. I make videos about outdoors, adventures, hiking, camping, paddling, running, um, cycling, did I mention cycling? All kinds of outdoor stuff. Uh, hopefully with a bit of fun thrown in as well. Probably shouldn't start it with death threats in that case. <laughs> but if you're into that kind of stuff, not death threats, outdoor fun, uh, have a look around the channel. You might find something you like. But this is a ranty run. What is a ranty run? A ranty run is where I run and rant about something in a single on-cut tech. Partly because it's a really easy way for me to get an extra video up. I haven't done one in a while and I figured death threats and the internet and online abuse seemed like a perfect topic. So, let's talk about it. Right, so this all kicked off um, about two months, two months ago, two, three months ago, when I decided to sort of get over my skepticism about vertical short form content online. So that is YouTube Shorts. TikTok and Instagram Reels, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to dedicate, I'm going to commit for once, and I'm going to post one short video every single day for 30 days, because I'd seen someone else that had a lot of success doing that. They posted one short video every day for 30 days, blew up the channel. So, I did, and actually had quite a lot of success. Several, several, two of those videos for over to maybe over a million views now on various platforms um, and they definitely help boost my uh, YouTube subscribers. By the way, if you subscribe because of a YouTube short, you find my channel because of a YouTube short, comment and let me know because I would be interested or if you can from TikTok or Instagram Reels or something like that, it would be good to know anecdotally at least if that worked. But anyway, that was kind of successful, but that's by the by. Um, but there was one video in particular that really, really rubbed people up the wrong way and led to death threats. <laughs> and uh, that video was um, back in April. Was it April? It was April. Yeah, it was April. I went over to Wales uh, for a week and I did a video woo, hiking up Irwitfa or, or, or Irwitfa uh, or Snowdon, which is the tallest mountain in Wales. Uh, you can go and look up the whole dealio with uh, the Welsh language and using it and mountain names and place names and stuff. But anyway, climbed up, tallest mountain in Wales, made a video about it. But when I was on the summit, I found a tent or a tent. People, people have been slagging me off for the fact I pronounce tent like tent is in a colour. Tent, T-I-N-T. -T. Get over it, accents exist. Although I did get called Canadian recently, which I'm okay with. Canada is a nice place. Where was I? Oh yes, back to the story. Yeah, so I found this tent and it was full of disgusting, filthy, like food. It was like maggoty bread and just maggoty bread um, and just general nastiness. And I made this short video, which was called, what was it called? This really shocked me or something like that. Or I was really disgusted or something. I can't remember what this, exactly the title was. You know what? Here's the video. You can just watch this first of all, and then we'll come back. Okay, so this really freaked me out. Recently, I was climbing Irwidfa, or Snowdon, the tallest mountain in Wales, and at the top is a cafe and a train station, and on the tracks, I saw a tent. A tent that was snagged, it wasn't moving because something heavy was inside it. Uh, what's in the tent? I felt I had a duty to go and investigate, so I had a look inside, and what I saw was absolutely disgusting. Uh, uh, uh. But you're gonna have to wait until my full video comes out to find out what it was. Okay, so that's the video I posted. So my intentions with that was not really to annoy people. I thought I'll just put it up as a fun teaser and then if people go, oh, I actually care what's inside the tent, they might go and, you know, watch the other videos. And I was gonna post, the, <laughs> post what was in the tent the next day, but then I started getting abuse in the comments. People saying they hated me because I didn't uh, reveal the option. People saying they reported my channel. Um, all, all, all kinds of abuse in the comments. I'm gonna drop some up here. I deleted a lot of them, so I don't have a record of them, but I'm sure there's some fresh ones, so I'll dot some of the, the abuse I got just for that video. So, <laughs> I, I just got a little bit vindictive at this point and decided, you know what? In true classic, uh, uh, online 
style. I'm gonna issue an apology video here. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be contrite. I'm gonna admit I messed up and apologize. I mean, these people were abusive, okay, you know, but you know, I think they, maybe they deserve an apology. This is the apology video I uploaded. Quite a lot of you are quite upset about this video, the fact I didn't reveal the answer, the fact I've wasted your precious 15 seconds, as if social media isn't a complete waste of time. Anyway, I mean, all my millennial mates over at Instagram think it's hilarious. They can't understand what you're so upset about, and then they go back to playing with their Harry Potter toys and eating their avocado toast. But uh, anyway, I thought rather than keep you all, keep you all waiting, I'll reveal what was in the tent, and this, is what I found in that tent. So I had a look inside and what I saw was absolutely And that is the video that got me death threats. Um, I think I had no less than two death threats, two, three death threats from, from that video. Now, let's make something clear. I'm from Northern Ireland and there are death threats and there are death threats. Parents here regularly threaten to kill their children. You know, I'll skin you alive if you do that. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a death threat. Obviously, it's a loving death threat in a disciplinary manner, manner and it's perfectly acceptable. And then there are the death threats from sorts of people who, you know, might actually carry out such an act and that you might want to take seriously. But anyway, um, I, I kind of went into the profiles of these people who were threatening me and pretty much they were all American teenage boys. Um, so, you know, not real threats, but it just really cheesed me off that people could be as abusive as that online. And uh, at the same time as that, um, I've been posting some videos, some of the, a lot of the videos I've been posting have been showing off beautiful outdoor spaces around Ireland, Northern Ireland, United Kingdom, and oh my goodness. Right, if you don't understand the political situation in Northern Ireland, you might want to go and do some research into it first, but anytime I posted a video that said, you know, do you know where this beautiful place in Northern Ireland is? I would get abusive comments from people coming on saying, there's no such thing as Northern Ireland. Or it's the occupied states, or occupied states, occupied counties, or you know, people who take offence at the very existence of Northern Ireland. Now, to be clear, I'm kind of, we'll say, agnostic on this issue, but uh, you know, as far as geographical and political things are concerned, this is a country called Northern Ireland, you know, and people here have a different cultural experience, you know. That's true, but equally, you know, some people don't like that, and that's, you know what, fair enough, but I don't want my uh, platforms to become havens for arguments and discussions, because what would happen is, once the toe rags from one side of the spectrum started issuing abuse, the toe rags from the other side would come back. See, I'm an equal opportunities insulter. Toe rags cross community tow rags. <laughs> so they would come in, that's why we get the Irish flag would get posted up and then somebody come up and post the Union flag and then there'd be all these arguments and fights in the comments about uh, reunification or, uh, or or loyalism or it's just not the type of content I want on my platform and to be honest I'm seeing a disappointing rise online in like sectarianism from the younger generation, like, I don't know, it seems to be like 20s down, don't know where it's coming from, but it does seem to be driven by platforms like TikTok, anyway, TikTok's where most of this abuse was happening, did I mention that, maybe I did mention that, yeah, most of, the, most of this abuse was TikTok, um, and maybe it's just because, I mean, it is just a symptom of the fact that it's mostly younger viewers on there, they just haven't wised up to the idea that there are nuances and differences of political opinion. They haven't wised up, especially haven't wised up to the idea that you're never going to get someone to see your point of view if you shout abuse at them. And to be honest, a lot of adults haven't quite figured that out here either. Be great. The day they do, we might actually have a little bit of agreement on this country, on this island. Look, Ooh, very beautiful, 
very nice. Anyway, so yes, sectarian abuse, death threats. And I'm not having it because as far as I'm concerned, my online platforms there, it's like having a shop front. I don't see the YouTube comment section as an open forum. I see it as, you know, a place where the kind of, I don't know, I would like the discussions in there to be positive. The problem with the negative discussions is that some people can't help themselves and they just reply and get into it and then it just turns into a whole thing. So I said I wasn't having it. So I banned, you can delete, you can like ban emojis. So I banned flag emojis on TikTok, which meant people could no longer, or any time they post a comment that had a flag in it, it just went Pfft straight into the bin, so that cut out probably 90% of the sectarian abuse and the sectarian comments I was getting on there. And just to be clear, just to be clear I, I, for balance, for balance, yeah, some of my videos were like, look at this amazing place in Northern Ireland. But I posted a video which was the most incredible race in Ireland. And I, technically some might argue that race was located in Northern Ireland, but in case you haven't noticed, Northern Ireland is still part of the island of Ireland, but so something I've realized is um, videos get more views if you say it's in Ireland than if you say it's in Northern Ireland because, you know, there's a bigger audience. <laughs> That's just the truth because people just aren't interested <laughs> in Northern Ireland as much as they are in Ireland. So if you say something happened in Ireland, you'll get more views. Little hack, but uh, some of you might find that politically unpalatable, and you know what? That's fine. But yeah, this just led to all this abuse from these numpties. Yeah, that nuance went whoosh, sailing over the past, sailing over the heads of some numbskulls, and uh, yeah, I got abuse for that as well. So I got abuse from both sides, to be clear. I'm kind of like stuck in the middle, like clients to the left of me, jokers to the right, here I am, stuck in the middle, trying to sit on the fence and <laughs> present a somewhat balanced viewpoint. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so I had to ban flags. I also just decided, you know what? I, I don't need to deal with this. And that kind of changed my attitude towards um, a lot of my YouTube comments as well, because I mean, I, sp oh. I spend about seven hours a week replying to comments and messages across all the different platforms I post on. That's a working day, a week, and I would like to keep doing that. I would for as long as I can. I appreciate if the channel ever got to a certain size, I might have to stop that, but I would like to respond to everybody when I can. And just an increasing percentage where the types of comments that they take effort to deal with. They just take a lot of effort to deal with. So I've changed my policy on my uh, on dealing with these types of comments. So previously, uh, previously what I would have done was I, uh, um, if a comment was rude or aggressive or anything like that, I would have I would have left it up unless it was like like abusive. So if it used like abusive language, and I know some people will have varying ideas on what that what, what that is. By the way, I don't think like we should we should expect to go through life completely shielded from insults um, and abuse. I know I've taken plenty in my in my life because of uh, various things uh, I believe and uh, yeah you know I, I think it's kind of good to have your assumptions and opinions challenged but have being challenged is different from abuse and when you have the ability to have the option to have that abuse or not I think that's kind of different but anyway yeah so if a comment was outright abusive I deleted it um or yeah that, that, that was basically I was basically my Paul said I just delete it. if it was outright right abusive I would delete it if it was someone who strongly disagreed with something I said or they were just being argumentative I might might leave it um, and I might reply to it, I might try to engage. Um, but now, now I've kind of changed my mind because something I've realized is that of the people who actually watch videos, a very, very small percentage comment. The, the, percentage, the percentage of people who comment is probably 5%, something like that. 
Um, yeah, it would be five. Yeah, probably five percent. People who watch the videos actually comment on them, and of that five percent, the percent that aren't happy with something in the, the videos, it's probably like it's like half a percent, something like that. So it can be very, very easy for me to dedicate a lot of that seven hours a week that I spend replying to comments to a very negative, replying and trying to deal with a very negative sub percentage of viewers. And I feel like that doesn't, that that's not fair to the people who, um, you know, who want to engage and who are getting something with it and who are open for, maybe open for more kind of nuanced to discussion or just there to like shout their opinion and not listen to, you know, they're not there to have a discussion, they're here to blast you with their point of view. So. I've started hiding users from the channel. There's a feature on YouTube, which is basically shadow banning. And when you select it, select hide user from the channel, they can still comment, they can still interact, but the best part, nobody sees it. So it's great. So all these really nasty, the really nasty negative people who have decided, it's not good with me trying to deal with, I've talked about this in previous videos, like lots of aspects of doing YouTube and so on have not been good for me. Um, and in, in all kinds of ways, and I just, I just don't need that. And frankly, I can't, you know, keep dealing with it. So, um, anyone who posts something now, it's outright abusive. I just hide user from channel, or anyone who's just like, yeah, or anyone who posts something sectarian or anything like that, hide user from channel. And that's that's now how I deal with it. I don't respond, I don't comment. Like previously, I might have occasionally really wanted to comment, you know, if it was something nasty, you know, there's, there's a sense of satisfaction in typing a sarcastic reply. There really is, you, you feel like, oh, especially if it's a clever one or a funny one, you feel like, I got them, I got them. But you haven't got them, all you've gotten, because think about it, think about it. If you've responded to an abusive comment with a clever reply, you've probably spent a little bit of time thinking about that reply. At least five minutes. Um, and I've sometimes sort of sp spent several hours on and off thinking about how I'm going to respond to it. They comment before before I reply to it. Why does that person deserve those that time out of my life? Why do they deserve They don't. They, you know, they don't. They're, they're not there to contribute. They're there to corrupt. They're there to shut down. They're there to you know, twist the, the narrative um, and they're just stealing my my time and they're stealing the time that I could be giving to, you know, people who are actually getting something more beneficial. So now, hi user from channel. And if I'm honest, I am conflicted about this because I do believe in engaging with people who disagree with you and who disagree with you strongly. I think it's really, really good. Um, to have conversations with people like that because I think um, if you if you just like shut them out entirely or or all if you do if you just argue back with them you just shut them down and they become more and more entrenched so I'm kind of conflicted but what I've had to realize is I can't have nuanced conversations in YouTube comments it's not possible and it's not possible because it's open. Anybody can join the conversation. And when anybody can join the conversation, at some point, you might be having the most seeing, you know, you might be starting to have some comments and you're making, this, this has happened. Sometimes if you have won people over slightly, but you'll always get somebody will come in and go, you're a Nazi. <laughs> and at that point, just chaos, absolute chaos. So it's, I think it's next to impossible to have those kinds of conversations on an open platform. For me, if I want to have a chat with somebody who disagrees with me on something or thinks differently than I do, those conversations tend to happen out here. You know, it tends to be, you know, on a hike or on a camp or something like that. And obviously that shrinks the pool quite a bit um, about, you know, with the number of people those conversations can happen with. but. Yeah, I just, I'm just convinced that online comments are just not, they're just not the right platform for these kinds of discussions to happen. Just to be clear, this doesn't mean I'm never going to respond to negative comments because uh, there is a difference between a negative comment and an abusive comment. 
And when it comes to a comment that's negative, they just maybe critical about the video or they disagree with something, well, from now on, I'm kind of going to kind of use my discretion as to whether or not I reply to those comments, as to whether or not I leave them on the channel. And it's the same with some of the abusive comments. There will be a, a case where I might reply, but it's only going to be when, you know, I'm in the right kind of headspace myself. And it's also only going to be when I think that I, you know, maybe I've got something to offer that person in some way, because sometimes you can tell by comments they've just misunderstood something, or they think you've said something you haven't said, and you, you know, you, you gotta correct that, and you know, it's good to do that sometimes. Not always, because again, it does eat up your time, but yeah, there are occasions that I'm gonna respond. But you gotta keep yourself right, first and foremost. And uh, as for people who are just like chronically negative, that's another one I kind of find kind of hard to just, you know, kind of block them essentially because I haven't always been the most posi positive person and sometimes people are negative because of, you know, like stuff they're going through. They can, some people can't help being negative. Other people, don't get me wrong, other people love the fact that they're negative. They absolutely revel in it. They love to pick holes in people and they, they just get a real kick out of it. There are some properly nasty <laughs> negative people who like their status and then there are some negative people who are kind of it's been foisted upon them through life circumstances and uh, you know more sympathy for those people but again it's just how do you how do you filter them and you just don't have the time just, that's what it boils down to there just isn't the time to be able to deal with the numbers once you add them up and if you try you're just gonna harm yourself that's kind of what it comes down to. You gotta go make sure that uh, you're in the right place before you can start, you know, trying to deal with somebody who, you know, maybe needs a, a discussion or just a good talking to. Yeah. And I deal with it quickly as well. As soon as I see a comment, I try not to even think about it. If it's an outright abusive comment, it's just instant hide user from channel. That way it's gone, out of my mind. Don't have to think about it. Don't have to look at it. Because I see so many um, YouTubers get tied up. They'll get like one negative comment on a video and then they'll make a big song and dance about it and again I'm in two minds about, about the, the benefit of that. I can understand why people do it because they're frustrated but also at the same time that negativity breeds engagement. Nothing gets... <laughs> if, you, if I went to my community tab right, and I posted one of the negative comments that I've gotten on the channel. That would get more engagement than any other comp, any other post that I put on the, the community tab. People would really come in and say, oh, Stephen, you, Stephen, don't listen to them. Your videos are great. Don't listen to them. They're, they're just a moron. You know, they'd all pile in and I'd feel a little bit good about myself, but I think all I've done is kind of generate more negativity. You know, that person's original negative comment has succeeded because comments kind of get drowned. People might not have seen it. I've just published it for the entire world to see. So. Yeah, that's something I'm not going to do either. I am aware I have made a video about this and I have put some <laughs> of the, the comments in. But, uh, okay, but yeah, here's what I'm going to say. Um, if you see a negative comment on my channel that I haven't spotted, don't feel that you need to weigh in on my behalf. I'm okay. I'm a big boy. I'm going to be, well, I'm 37 now. I turned 37, believe that, a few weeks ago. I can handle it. I'm an adult. That's the only thing I've, re I've realized. We're not in the playground anymore. You don't actually have to get offended. Um, offense is a choice when you're an adult. You can choose to be offended or you can just choose to move on. It's difficult to choose to not be offended, but I think it's a habit. I think it's a habit. I think people get into the habit of being very easily offended uh, by pretty much, you know, any slight. And it's a choice. I think it is a choice. Oh, there's some more sheep. How long has this been going for? 21 minutes. No one's going to watch me rambling off for 21 minutes about abusive comments. I'm pretty sure I've pretty much said the exact same thing over and over. Right. Okay. As a little treat, very enjoyable treat, if you manage to get this far in the video, well, I'm going to tell you about some upcoming videos. This is normally stuff I only share with members, but if you're still watching, I'm going to tell you. So, I've got 
to more videos coming from Donegal. I did a three day van camping trip in Donegal. One of those videos is up. Go watch it if you get the chance. We we'll have another two coming. The third one I think is going to be the best, um, where I climb Muckish Mountain. Uh, Muckish was a mountain I nearly didn't climb because from a distance I thought it looked incredibly boring. But when I got up to it, it was anything but boring. So I think you'll enjoy that. I have um, another camping video which has been was shot like three weeks ago, actually no more than a month ago, and it's in the edit. It's a little bit different. Um, on Friday this week, I'm shooting a trail race video, and then over the weekend, I'm shooting a camping with Gary video. A lot of you have been asking for me to go camping with Gary again. Oh, hello, hi sheep. Do you want to go camping with Gary? No, no. Gary's a lot to handle on a camp on a camping trip. People have been demanding his. No, no, Gary. You sure? No. Oh, okay. People have been demanding Gary. So Gary is a a bit of a disaster <laughs> at times. Every time we went camping, something terrible's happened to him. Um, and he does my head in. Uh, so yeah, hopefully shooting that this this weekend. Um, I have. Oh, I'll tell you one other video that's coming up. Um, I oh two videos. I'm going to be doing a hammock camp for the very first time. I got like a full hammock camping set up um, at Christmas. Would you believe? Haven't used it yet. Have not used it yet. So I want to do that because my last camp or my last hammocking experience was um, seven years ago, and it was a disaster. So I, I didn't try it since. And then the last video I will tell you about is that. Um, I want to do a bin bag survival challenge with a twist. Now, usually when people do a bin bag survival challenge, it's really boring, obvious, and dull. Dull, dull, dull. What they do is they just make a tarp out of their bin liner and they hang it up, you know, just as if it was a tarp. What I want to do is I have to basically make like a house, like Stephen's little bin bag house, so it's going to have walls and windows, um, and then I'll set some challenges for myself. I have to make like water containers out of the bin bags, maybe an item of clothing, something something like that the other challenge is that i have to do it in an eco-friendly way so rather than bring all these plastic bags up into the forest that you know might end up getting blown away i'm going to use biodegradable bags which <laughs> is actually going to make it a lot more difficult because they're really flimsy and i'm also going to use paper-based tape that's biodeg <laughs> biodegradable as well just to make it incredibly more difficult and no duct tape on this challenge i might use like some natural twine as well but yeah quite looking forward to that one it could be could be quite interesting and uh aside from that a few other ideas but yeah thanks for watching this i nearly blew my nose there and i realized i was on camera and that none of you would want to see that um thank you for watching this ranty run and if you've got any tips for how you deal with online abuse let me know but yeah to recap you don't have to deal with it just bye bye and move on. Thanks for watching.